G'day, John. So good to be talking to you today. Ben, my old friend, good to be here. <laughs> Thank you, mate. Um, hey, before we get into all the meaty stuff, could you tell me what you get up to when you're not working? Oh, for me, I um, I got I got to get my wriggles out, Benny. I yeah. got, uh. Uh, so I like to be very active, uh, do a bunch of running, been getting back into my surfing. I hit the Corumban Alley yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, they're out there with 10,000 other people. So been <laughs> out the water of late, I hit the gym, uh, got myself a new toy, an electric skateboard, the Evolve yeah. electric skateboard. Um, Is that one with a trigger? Yeah, yeah. Good. The, I got it going down a hill at almost 50 kilometers an hour over the weekend. Uh, and it, it feels like just like snowboarding uh, on, on a road. Um, and the thing is just an absolute weapon and, and uh, incredible range on it as well. It's got like 80 kilometer range. So uh, yeah, I like doing all that sort of stuff and then hanging out with the kids, you know, usually involving one of those activities, but, with uh with young people as well so um yeah that keeps me keeps me on the streets off the streets all the above yeah fantastic um and i love looking at the uh your um social media and just seeing what you're getting up to uh, <laughs> you were um yeah i love seeing the uh the beach photos and taking some time for yourself man that's um yeah that's good. yeah you try to find that balance yeah, yep. No, good stuff. Business can be hectic from time to time. Sure can. Um, well, hey, I, I think we'll get to the the businessy stuff soon. But would you be able to give us an oversight of what your career has looked like from you know back in the day to to where you are now? I think that'd be really good for our listeners to get that context. Oh, Benny, I've done it all, mate. Um, <laughs> well, so always been involved in small business uh or you know smaller style businesses uh uh straight out of university uh, out of melbourne i did a bachelor of multimedia and then i uh uh i, I joined literally this three-person agency there in uh, in mulvin in melbourne yeah. and um on the first day my boss sent me out on a sales call uh, and I'd done no selling and he just said, go and see this potential client and go and talk to him about, you know, some uh, new website. Uh, this is back in, uh, what was it, 2001 and uh, sort of fumbled my way through it and <laughs> um, learn a lot. And that really just ignited my passion for uh, not only like the, the so, so I started life, studied graphic design. So mm -hmm. I've always loved the design side of things. But then I uh, really loved the technical side of things. So the internet's exploding at that time, 2001. <clears throat> um, Google hadn't even, uh, you know, got off the ground by then. And, yeah. and um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we were hand cutting HTML websites and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> but then combining that just with the, the, the challenge of, of running a business. So, you know, doing sales and, uh, keeping clients happy from an account management perspective and sending invoices and collecting invoices and everything else that goes into uh, building uh, a business. And anyway, that, that sort of, that, that original business that I first started working in uh, eventually went pear-shaped and failed and, and sort of got dissolved. But then uh, in 2006, started uh, the current business that I'm the, uh, the owner and founder of. Uh, so it's five by five, and we're based here at Burley Heads, the Gold Coast. Uh, we're a team of almost 45 people now, and you know, designers and developers and project managers, and we've got a CEO that's running the business, uh, sales team, uh, developers, all that sort of stuff. So, you know, over the last uh, almost 16 and a half years, just mm. been trying to do myself out of a job uh, role by role. So I've sort of <laughs> done it all, mate. Yeah, how good. And how many websites do you reckon you've you've built or the business has built over the, let's uh, say, the 27 years? Yeah, it's years definitely in the it? thousands. It's probably, oh. I'd say, yeah, three to 4,000. 
Yeah, yep. And uh, yep. no more hand coding HTML anymore. No, no, it's all about WordPress <laughs> now. Elementor yeah. and WordPress. How good. Yep. <laughs> Making things easy. Um, yeah, very good. And and hey, um, I guess like we've been we've known each other since I think 2014. Um, mm -hmm. We met at a, a course we both did together. But um, and and subsequently, you've helped us with I think I count about five websites, um, whether they were refreshes or brand new ones. Um, yep. So we've been working together for a while now. Um, and uh, and I know that you also work with other accounting firms as well. What would you say, what's the philosophies you'd share with um, accounting firm owners on what makes a cracking digital strategy? Oh, well, it's, and this was, it's, it's, it's a really great question because for probably the first, oh, I'd say 12 to 13 years, hmm. we solely focused on building websites yep. and then I just had this sort of light bulb moment that it's it's not actually about the website it's about the outcomes that a website mm. generates so what do you what do you need your website to do and we ask this question whenever we uh, start working with a, a new prospective client mm. and and it usually uh, falls into or combination of the, the the two answers. The first being, I actually need the phone to ring, and I need leads and inquiries to come through. Yep. Is that uh, the most and, common. Ah, uh, well, it depends on the industry. Okay. So yeah, yeah, and it and it depends on the, the you know the industry, the client. Um, mm -hmm. So that there's still to this day, there's like clients that just have more work than they can handle, and then that's the second. The, the second reason is they just need a presence. They need to have some sort of, you know, we recognize as the authority or the leader in their industry, um, but generating leads and inquiries just happens organically through their networks or the partnerships or uh, the mm -hmm. referral channels or, or whatever. So it's usually one of those, those, those two reasons. So we then sort of this light bulb moment going off in my brain where it's like, well, it's not actually about the website because historically we'd sort of we'd build a website and we'd say, there you go, client, here's your amazing new website and we'd move on to the next project. And, you know, uh, it wasn't very outcome centric or, or focused. So that's then where we doubled down and we said, all right, well, let's actually spend a bunch of more time getting to know each other uh, I want to understand uh, your business in in a lot more detail. So that's where that's that sort of foundational piece where we're on a very intimate level. We get to know each other, uh, and and essentially we you know figure out who you are, what you do, uh, who you do that for, who what does your target clients look like, how uh, at the end of this project, how you're going to uh, define this as a successful project and really just spending a lot of time together to, to define that. Mm. Um, so there's that foundational sort of strategy piece. Uh, we're then helping clients with their logo and brand because we'd get a lot of clients that come through and their their logo, you know, was just horrible. And and we say, oh, well, this, you know, from a visual perspective, we've got to get that that yeah. uh, the branding sorted because everything else flows from that from a visual perspective. And, uh, and just on that that yeah. point, if we could just touch on it. So, um, you know, I imagine it's hard to build a, a really awesome website if if the branding around that is is poor. Um, what's your perspective on how often people should revisit their branding? Because, I, I mean, there's a lot of accounting firms that have legacies of, you know, 10, 20 years in business. Um, so, so how often should we look at that stuff? Mm. And then I'd love to hear how those conversations go of like not trying to break hearts, but give genuine helpful feedback around it. Yeah. 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 Well, you look at, so, so what constitutes a, a good brand mm. uh, and it's, and it's really like it's timelessness. So you look at something like the IBM logo that has been around since I think it's like fifties or sixties mm. Um uh, so that, that thing is is like you know sixty years old, but it, it technically hasn't changed dramatically in that time. Same with the Coca Coca Cola brand. Um, so you see brands go through design iterations and evolution. 
but the very established brands, they're not radical changes. They're literally like little percentage changes in the mix. So it just depends on uh, where you're at. And, and yeah, we, we, we're very open and honest with a client and we'll say, uh, you know, your current brand is not serving you and, and uh, the, the outcomes that you want to achieve and, and and it's it's of of detriment to you know to what you're trying to get done here. So mm-hmm. we need to get this piece sorted before we can then move on to the nice uh, shiny website. Yeah, yep, awesome. And, and I guess there's intentionality about having it having these conversations in this order. Um, wow, no, great. Um, yeah. yeah, cool. Okay, what's the uh, the next? So thing? so that was the branding side of things. Uh, we then make sure like visual assets. So- so you, you look at you know what happened in 2020. Mm. Uh, I could no longer like go and walk through the front door of my my friendly neighborhood accountant. Yep. So how do we go and simulate that experience? We get a nice photo shoot done, which which shows the team and the office and um, you know people that you'll be working with and all that sort of stuff. Um, to put together a, a video so that that you know uh, really gets the uh, so the business owner front and center and mm. tries to um, build a bit of connection with them and and understand you know their brand their story and and where they've come from and why they get up every day and choose to uh to serve their clients in the accounting world um so we get all these sort of visual assets together because it's hard to build a great website if you haven't got nice visual (laughs) assets yeah uh and you don't want to go down the stucky stock photo route um and then we look at copy (laughs) it's so funny we did our stock we we created our own sort of stock photos and they they're like our people, but they literally look like stock photos. I was like, oh. <laughs> They're almost too good. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Sometimes uh, you get that. Yeah, yeah. Where it's 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 almost like too corporate. Um, so that's where you need to inject a little bit of personality there and have some fun. And really like the, yep. photo- the, the photography should reflect who you are as a business, mm. the culture there, your philosophy, all that sort of stuff. Yep, yep. The whole the whole website, yeah. That's um, yep. Mm, cool. And then we look so, at um, copy. So obviously, yep. copy is really important from a conversion perspective, getting people to to raise their hand. I think you do a, a fantastic job of this in terms of, you know, being very different out there, especially in the accounting space. Um, but then we we balance that against keeping the Google gods happy. So <laughs> making sure that it's uh, it's got all the nice <laughs> keywords in there and keyword density and mm. copy length and all that sort of uh, important stuff. Um, uh, that then is all wrapped in an amazing website. One that knows not only just visually spectacular, but Technically excellent, looks good mm-hmm. on all your mobile devices, quick to load, all that sort of stuff, intuitive. Um, very strong focus on search engine optimization. So yep. if generating leads is a, a big part of what someone's trying to get done, then there's a bunch of foundational work that needs to be done from an SEO perspective. Mm. Uh, and that's where you can you can actually utilize different tools to, to figure out, well, what are people typing into Google to find your products and services in your geographical location and your different specific industries or verticals or niches or, or whatever. Um, because if you then you can get that right, you can you can customize the copy and the words and the structure of the website to to fit that accordingly. Yeah. Um, so that you get copious amounts of traffic off the back of Google, the phone runs off the hook, mm. um, and you got more work than you know what to do with. And then the final step of the puzzle is is really the hosting support component. So having a partner in your life that is uh is in your corner that you can trust that takes care of all the you know the wordpress core and plugin updates uh tweaks and changes to the website all that sort of stuff Mm. so you put all those elements together and that's what we call the big fat juicy burger with a lot uh (laughs) that's just our our uh analogy for a, a tasty digital uh digital solution um and we literally have big fat you know it's like the the burger from the takeaway shop benny it's dripping it's got the beetroot it's got the bacon it's got all the trimmings yep. um any pineapple 
Pine, definitely pineapple. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Controversial, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that, yeah, basically that's, that's our approach from an uh, implementation perspective. Yeah, no, very cool. I, um, I reflect back to a moment in my own website SEOE journey. Um, so after the first few months of starting Inspire, I found that I was in a position where, um, you know, the growth was off the charts. Um, like <clears throat> I'd started, started the firm with a handful of clients. Um, and all of a sudden we, I'd 10 X the, the monthly revenue I, I started with, um, like literally, uh, you know, within a few months. Um, and I thought that would continue. Um, so I, you know, I hired people, I went to look for this, you know, gigantic space and I was like, geez, this is cool. <laughs> and then, um, uh, and then uh, I got a bit of an awakening when the growth stopped. And what I realized is that that initial growth had been my my network. So family and friends who'd followed me mm. um, and, uh, you know, you know, we had launch like a little launch party thing and a few people had changed their accounts because they weren't completely tied to them. And, and oh, yeah, let's yep. give them a crack. Um, and so I went into this like, like, oh, dear moment. Um, it wasn't like that at the time. I was like, <laughs> We're in trouble here, um, and and I study digital marketing. And one of the things I I was actually pretty early on, I reckon, was SEO. Um, back in 2013, it was it wasn't competitive at all with especially other accounting firms in Brisbane yep. in particular. Um, and so you know, I'd write a couple of articles, and um, I remember when my wife Stevie was out studying, all I'd be doing is like typing away and just like keyword stuffing all the <laughs> all the things Google now gets Best angry at. Accountant Brisbane. <laughs> over and over again. Yeah. Um, but uh but I guess my, my question is with SEO, like things have changed so much. And and I remember back in the day when I was like a bit more ear to the ground, the algorithms changed and was there like animals like Google Panda? Is that an SEO thing? Yeah. Yeah, penguin and panda, and um, yeah. that that was some some big ones. That it's, they did away with a lot of that that you know keyword stuffing. Um, yep. And then it it shifted more to to relevance um, based approach. Yeah. Mm, yep. Yeah. Okay. And and so you know even in my position, I'm I'm not a gigantic firm. I'm uh, kind of at the bigger end of the small um, small accounting firm yep. but we're, we're up against you know the the big four in the mid-tier with huge budgets that they could mm. sort of throw at seo so do, do you have any or even like digital strategy in general yep. do you have some guidance for our listeners like if they are a smaller firm like how do we compete with seo given now it's such a common thing yeah it's uh like you really uh, unless you're someone like yourself that likes to get in there, pull things apart, figure out how they work. Um, mm. Tinkerer. I think you're a bit of a tinkerer, Ben, generally. <laughs> um, like the short answer is just find, find a partner that um, is it can help you uh, with, with that. So, uh, but, but like you still, you still need the, the understanding and, yep. and understand the philosophies. Um, and like I said, it's, it's really, it's literally like those pieces of the puzzle, the, the ingredients in the burger, like that's the process you need to go through. You need to get your strategy right. You yep. need to look for the opportunities in the market from a search perspective. Um, you need to make sure that there's plenty of good copy that's written around that it's all housed in a great site that mm. is technically great um <clears throat> so like they're the elements the general sort of philosophy and mindset that that business owners need to bring mm. is, is in and around just abundant sharing and and uh you know there's there's nothing uh sacred or there's no information mm. that is 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 not known in this world anymore. Anyone can find out how to do anything through YouTube and Google. Mm. Um, so, you know, really how do you leverage that? It's it's just publishing as much of this authority content. And you're, we're doing it right now. We're recording the podcast and we're, yep. you know, sharing information and ideas and all that sort of stuff. So you just need to, 
you as a mm. as an accounting firm need to figure out what does your flavor of that look like is it webinars is it is it long form articles mm. uh is it audio is it video you know there's just so many options and we're all just really you know media producers now at the end mm. of the day um how do you go and do that and how do you implement yeah. that in your business yeah okay well um that, that's an interesting thing the media producers uh mm. you know, interesting word there and, and that almost suggests a shift in mindset when we think about um, you know how we present ourselves online um so maybe um, if you're open to it would you be able to share how you do that from your perspective and your business yeah so the like the easiest thing to do <laughs> is literally like appear on podcasts just like yours Ben. <laughs> where like john has to do zero production uh he literally rocked in five minutes before highly unprepared benny throws a few questions <laughs> at him he rattles on for an hour and uh hopefully says some meaningful stuff along the way and um uh, Bob's your uncle, right? I can go and share this. I can uh, I can post it to my website. I can transcribe it. I can do all that sort of stuff. So that's just an example of you know leveraging off someone like the amazing Benny to <laughs> to to do that and appeal to a different audience. And we just mm. happen to work with a whole bunch of accountants all around Australia, so we've got a lot of experience in that space. So um, you know, I can speak with authority on that. So that's just an example. Um, we uh, we've got a what we call a monthly lunch and learn, where literally, like uh, we're doing one on Thursday, and it's around sales. So we've got a uh, got a, a good a good friend, Chandel, who is uh, going to talk about sales conversion mm. because uh we sort of weave that in from a website perspective because people go and generate all these leads but they leave money on the table because they can't convert them you know yeah. and it, it, it falls over from an offline perspective so uh we're always looking for different themes where we can add value and we pull in different partners to do so so mm. you know there's just two examples of what we're doing we've got a monthly newsletter we put out um, yep. consistently oh with the webinar we'll convert that to a long-form blog post as well yep so okay that works from an seo perspective so we'll get that transcribed uh, we'll get lots of nice visuals and graphics in there because i've already done the slides from webinar perspective so the oh, hard yeah, work's yeah. largely done and in an ideal world it's not me doing it it's a team of other people that are doing it so my commitment or my original input will literally be probably 20 minutes, half an hour, just sort of coming up with the idea, fleshing it out, spending some time with my guests to come up with mm. sort of three topics to talk about. We put together some slides and, you know, the marketing machine then takes over. Very yeah. similar to what you've created with yours, mate. Yeah. You know, you've cool. taken a very systemized approach to, uh, to media production. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's, um, that's been pretty integral, especially, um, with what we had in 2020 onwards where we, you know, we couldn't get out in front of people and do workshops face to face. Um, so yeah, we, we kind of quadrupled down like, you know, many other businesses did on our um, online production. We used to do a lot of that and it was hard work to be honest, mate, yes. like um, <laughs> just to get like a room of 30 people together and then like, like I wouldn't sleep the night before and I'd be stressed yeah. out of my brain because I've got to like present all day and, uh just the, the unknowns and the variables and there'd always be some crazy cat in the back row that's you hmm. know throwing curveballs at you and yeah i was just i just didn't enjoy it at all whereas i'd, <laughs> much, I'd love to get on here and have a chat and do all that sort of stuff mm. so you got to find what works for you yeah there's always one in the room isn't there <laughs> oh dear no oh, cool all righty well um uh, what do you kind of see as the biggest opportunities for accountants in this space? Well, I mean, just just following on from what we're saying is that market leadership. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with with all due respect, and I can say this after working with probably 30, 40 different accountants over the years, <clears throat> uh, they're uh, with the greatest of love, accountants tend to sort of, you know, hide hide away behind the desk, and and um, you know they tend to be sort of more technical, more mechanical sort of people that are happy to do the work and and um, get into the nitty gritty rather than being, 
you know, the 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 front person or the the shining star at the front of the organization, right? <laughs> um, so by um, by exercising that market leadership and, mm -hmm. and talking about you know specific themes or topics or or just generally sort of being more proactive in terms of how you communicate with your respective clients and your clients. Um, it's not that reactive approach. It's more of a proactive approach. Um, and then what will happen is people will naturally then just gravitate to to you through mm. different channels, whether it's through LinkedIn, through, it's through Google, from an SEO perspective, um, whether it's through old school stuff like referrals or whatever, you will be the recognized leader or authority or expert in your industry. So it's, it's, it's a general sort of mindset shift around that. Yep. And, and I can kind of see that, let's say, sharing thought leadership pieces or, or market leadership stuff, um, your, your content that you share, maybe currently internally, but sharing that on a, on a broader platform, that well, not only helps you, um, you know, potentially attract clients, but it helps with your SEO strategy, the, the website, so um, yeah. pumping that full of, um, you know, good content. Um, so we're all kind of building this big big machine just through sharing your ideas uh, correct yeah that's ultimately what it is idea generation and sharing mm, yep cool there you go i mean at the end of the day it's not that hard a concept it's just no <laughs> it's not complicated <laughs> like people have been doing it since you know forever right um mm. it's just the, the tools have become a lot more accessible you know i set up a little media studio here in the the back room at our office here in burley heads and you know, for the sake of a thousand dollar camera and some some studio lights and a green screen and a nice mic and all that sort of stuff, mm -hmm. like I got a pretty pretty nice setup now. And same deal with you, like you've yep. you've, you've done that, and um, <clears throat> it's here. I can literally just rock in, smash out a bunch of videos, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's nice and easy and accessible. So. But it does take time and effort and learning, you know, I've been invested a bunch of time just to wrap my head around all the tools and the tech. And for the average business owner, it's just like another thing to do. It's a complete distraction. I get that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we were sort of chatting off, off air about this. Um, like this is one of the real risks that if you don't go down this path, mm -hmm. then the divide and the wedge just becomes it's too great. And you just, fall behind and you you do what you've always done and and before you know it like the whole industry is being completely shaken up and yep. yeah yeah the risk yep uh um interesting <laughs> um well and what a like we talked about thought leadership and and i mean you're a business owner as well and so are the mm -hmm. the accountants listening uh today or i guess most of them um but uh, what are some thought leaders in business that you follow uh, business or life i kind of keep that broad yeah like i i consume a lot of different stuff um mm. like for me it's i find the biggest challenge in in my life like being a leader in the business um i very quickly learned that um Everything, a lot flows from from me, uh, my energy, and how I both physically and emotionally show up in the business mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> each day, and and that was for me uh, a really critical part of uh, not only attracting some amazing talent but retaining that talent, <laughs> making sure that people want to hang around for a long mm -hmm. time to come. So I really like created that space um and mm. through the intensity that that i bring and so i was like well you know what who can i model off that and and a, a lot of that is is like special forces and, mm. and people like you know your your aunt middletons or your jockos or uh you know your david goggins and mm. like, they take things to the extreme you don't have to do all that but it's yep. just cherry picking that and like they, you know, the common theme there is about being uncommon. So, mm. you know, how do you how do you get up in the morning, and mm. and uh, how do you set yourself up for success? Do you just roll out of bed and 
you know, jump in the shower and get in the car or do you get up half an hour earlier and do your 100 push-ups and a little bit of breathing and make it a cold shower and <laughs> uh that that sets you up because that's the the hardest thing that you got to do for the day and everything else is pretty easy thereafter and you're you're in a good mood because you're awake and you're alive and you're buzzing and mm. uh all that sort of stuff so that's where i i sort of invest a lot of time and effort because i find that's what produces the greatest mm. um results and and hopefully i walk in the door you know, with a big smile on my face and in a, a good mood and, and you know, other people uh, want to follow me with my crazy ambitious ideas and go out <laughs> there and do, you know, interesting things uh, from a business perspective. So um, they're the sort of people that, that uh, inspire me. Um, you know, I listen to a lot of different podcasts like, you, you know, uh, Tim Ferriss and Lex Friedman and, and, uh, um yeah a wide range of stuff so that's a little bit of cross-section in what terms of what's in my earbuds yeah cool and i guess uh, i've kind of listened to a few of those people that you mentioned before what's interesting is that it's actually more on mindset than let's say business alone um although some of them do touch on you know leading teams and that sort of thing um, with with their perspective of you know, being let's say military yeah. But, um, so yeah. I think it's it's a lot of business owners that'll be that are listening to this, Ben, and mm. you know a common uh, friend and mentor of ours, uh, Dr. David Dugan. Mm -hmm. uh, you know he he talks about like business is an intellectual sport, um, and he's he's uh, he's an ex. You know he's a commander in the navy and um, Olympian and and all this sort of stuff. Um, so you you sort of take these sporting philosophies and and mindsets uh, but apply it through the intellectual lens um, which which I really love because I love playing sport mm. um, and I love to train and I love the, the teamwork and all that sort of stuff but I also love like problem solving like doing the mm. Rubik's Cube and you know, uh, my brain sort of always ticking away, like, how do I solve this problem? How do I solve this problem? And, and you know, you try a bunch of stuff, it fails, it doesn't work. And eventually you figure it out and that gives me a great amount of satisfaction. So when you sort of combine the two, uh, there's no better thing in this world than uh, uh, and, and more stressful and annoying and a hard thing in this world than being a business owner. But the satisfaction that it can bring uh, when you get some some runs on the board uh, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, how good, how good. And, and you know, I guess connecting mindset, um, and I'd love to sort of talk numbers given we, we are talking with accountants. Um, I, I think a lot of accountants actually need a mindset shift when it comes to, uh, in particular, how much time or money to spend on marketing. Um, so... <laughs> Because um, I know that, uh, you know, over, over the time, I even heard some suggestions on what we should be spending on marketing now. And I was like, what? Like, we spend a lot. And this this suggestion was like, hmm. Um, but I'll ask. Well, what's I'll that ask, expressed as a percentage? I'll uh, I'll say that, but I'll ask you first. I'll, I'll tell you what I was <laughs> I don't <right>. know. <laughs> it was impressive. <laughs> I'm going to invest in well, it. It's, it's funny because so so like David's our business coach and he he talks about the the ratios of yes. uh, you've got thirty percent basically sales and marketing in the sales and marketing bucket. You've then got thirty percent. Yeah, correct. Yep, thirty uh, percent um, uh, uh, fulfillment, so operations, um, cost cost of sales. Um, and then in an ideal world, 30% profit, right? Uh, and, 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 and it's going to vary from industry to industry, business, to business yep. and, and whatever. Right. But like, they're the sort of ratios that, hmm. that he talks about and, and could I same those, deal. Like, sorry, sorry. Could I, could I get those percentages one more time? I think it may have just cut out a sec. So 30% oh. dollars in sales and marketing. Sorry. So 30% sales and marketing, 30% hmm. operations and delivery, 30% hmm. profit. Uh -huh. And the extra ten percent, uh, uh, like bits in there somewhere, <laughs> grey area, whatever. Right. So, but like la yeah. largely, you know, it might be forty percent operations or mm. or. Um, but, but even if you, so, so you know, you started you preface that by saying, "Wow, it's like 
I don't, I don't know what your number was, but when yeah. he said that, I was like, 30%, like that's massive. Like if you're, you know, $10 million business, 3 million bucks in marketing, like yeah. that's, that's huge. It's massive. Um, yeah. So uh, like, but that's the cool thing about digital is you can, you can, you know, you get a lot more bang for your buck. Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So what was your number? So they suggested it depends on what what um, growth you wanted. So there was like lower sure. percentages, like five to ten percent, which was sort of a you know average, like just ticking along or you know growing a few percent a year. But I think the the high growth was about twenty percent of of revenue, right. straight straight into um, marketing, whether it's um, you know all, all the different varieties, including you know paid um, paid ads. AdWords. Um, yeah, yeah. Just, just <laughs> the money to these the SEO experts. <laughs> That's it. So, um, yeah, I, I kind of almost fell off my chair when I worked at how much that yeah. was because that, like, if I did that, um, that would be a you know a lot more than we're spending. Um, even Correct. though I think we are spending a lot more than let's say the other, the, 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 I guess the standard accounting firm might spend on on marketing. Yeah. But and I you, may have oversimplified those numbers as well. Um, yeah, there's, there's probably a little bit more complexity and depth through that. But yeah, yeah, and I guess because it's combining sales and marketing, and, and correct, and maybe a, quite a decent role of the senior accountants in a firm would be focused on sales. So what I kind of get yeah. that 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 could be a big portion. But if we were to kind of right. work out a number, it still sounds like it's double digit. Yep, uh, that we should be spending on marketing itself. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah, um, and and then maybe as the the business owner or that thought leader, if if we're looking to um, you know create a calendar like an ideal week or ideal month, like what would you suggest we put aside for content creation, recording, and that sort of stuff? Good question. Uh, <laughs> as and, much and, as you can, yeah. Like, yeah. It, 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 uh, like I, I think a lot of this comes back to your enjoyment level as well, Benny. Like if it's if it's if it really grates on you, then like it's gonna be it's gonna be a push. But yep. but if you enjoy it and you can get in that rhythm and and you can you can do it and build systems where you don't have to do the maniacal components of it and you're just there, just you know, chatting to a camera or a microphone or mm. or whatever. Like I I, I feel whatever's practical at the end of the day, there's no right answer to that. Yep. And yeah. anything's better than nothing. Yeah. Yep. For sure. Um, and, and I guess maybe the encouragement for people listening and trying to work that out is um, at least from my perspective is I, I would commit as, as much time as you can give it, but um, remember that everything that you do or produce can be split up into so many different purposes, or I think the word is repurposing. Yep. Um, but it, it'll help with, you know, marketing to new clients, your ability to, if you get a referral, they land on a, a great looking website and that just helps your sales process. Um, you know, whether it's the speed of the sales process or, um, you know, the success of it, the percentage conversion. So um, I think, yeah, when, when we, when I sort of look at marketing, um, especially, well, I mean, most of what we do is digital, um, but it, it absolutely ticks so many boxes just doing one activity like a webinar. Yeah. Um, so mm. how we use that then is is like I've got an upcoming webinar and the, yep. our two sales guys are, you know, uh, trying to build trust and rapport and and um, you know working mm. working a uh, a client through through our engagement process. Um, we just say like jump on the webinar. Like there's a webinar mm. on a Thursday. You know it's about this. Jump in and and it sort of that ties into a broader concept in and around um, uh, you know the seven eleven four. Yep. Uh, study done by Google. Zero moment of truth. Any big ticket sale. You need seven hours of mm. uh content someone someone needs to absorb seven hours of content 11 touch points uh, over four different platforms ideally um yeah and it's uh not a lot of people invest that time and the effort to do so yeah yep absolutely and while we're talking about different platforms and 7114 um so our listeners have got to the end of your podcast interview what are some other ways people can find out more about you <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, uh, if they want to go and consume some more content, uh, <laughs> I just happen to have written a book, um, yep. which is a, another a way, a, a leveraged platform of me going to spend probably three or four hours with a prospective client without mm. me having to spend three or four hours with a prospective client. Mm. Um, and that's the cool thing. Your brain sort of lumps it all together and, um, you know, you'll get to the end of that time and know whether John seems like a good trustworthy guy that I'd want to spend some money with or maybe not. <laughs> um, we'll do five websites with. Yeah, <laughs> spot on. Uh, so uh, if actually on Spotify, yep. you can search. I wrote a book called Love at First Sight, S-I-T-E. Uh, if you just search on that in the uh, little search bar there, you should uh, find my audio book completely free and, and you can uh, listen to that. I think that goes for about that. three or four hours. Uh, so there's that. Um, you can check us out on the socials, 5 by 5 web. Uh, check out our website, 5 by 5comau um, And that's yeah, the, the spelling of the words. F I V E. B Y F I V E. Uh, like I said, we've we've done about uh, 20, 30 different accounting websites. If you click on our work mm -hmm. and then click on the accounting category, Beautiful. you will see examples of great looking, high performing accounting websites. You want to go there and cherry pick some of those concepts, uh, see what we're doing with them. Um, with other clients, that's probably a good starting point in terms of what's best practice, what's working from uh, a search SEO perspective, mm. what's working from conversion perspective, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, awesome. And and then if someone wants to take the next steps and suss out like the what it looks like to work with you, what's the web strategy workshop that you do? Yeah, yeah. So this is this is what I was saying it was the foundational piece mm -hmm. where. A truly responsible way of getting to know each other, Benny, is to is to to do this. Uh, we actually charge, so so mm. I guess generally from a from a sales perspective, like the the challenge that we used to face was we'd get everyone from you know a one man sort of Jim's mowing style business <laughs> right up to uh, an ASX listed company chasing us for website quotes, and it mm. was so hard to differentiate. Um, uh, who who was an ideal client and mm. and whether they'd be a good fit and, and all that sort of stuff. And when we implemented this uh, this paid workshop, so we charge five hundred dollars plus GST. Yep. Uh, what it really does is is it really filters out the people that are fair to income about you know building a new website uh, and their degree of commitment to to doing so. Mm. Uh, and then secondly, it actually gives us a, a bunch of budget to be able to go and sit with them and and uh to really unpack their business and like i said who they are what they do uh their process for delivery uh their their target audience how they're going to measure the success of the the project and we guarantee we say look you're going to get to the end of this workshop and if you haven't got one thing from this uh you will leave it knowing a lot more about the world of digital than you've than you did going into it. Yep. Uh, that's 500 bucks well spent. And even if you choose not to partner with us, that's okay because, you know, who you choose to partner with, you're going to go into that project more educated, informed and, yeah, and all right. that sort of stuff. And it just works so well because they, you know, they see that we're passionate and, and builds up a whole bunch of trust. We're able to show, you know, walk through a bunch of case studies. Uh, we go away. We then uh, actually work on the strategy Mm -hmm. put that strategy together, come back, present it to the client. Obviously, there's a, um, a proposal or a, a, an estimate that is pegged to that so they know mm -hmm. exactly what it's going to cost, uh, the timings associated with that, uh, a bunch of competitive research. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much what the web strategy workshop is. Yeah, fantastic. So it's it's education, advice, and then a plan of attack on what they, they want to implement with you, what that looks like. Yep, very tailored yeah. to their business. Yep, and and that could include all those different pieces, like the I mean, that's the strategy coming off, but the the logo and branding, um, media assets, like all through to the delivery of the site and hosting. Spot on. Yep. Wonderful. How good is that? <laughs> 
No, very good. Well, hey, thanks so much, John. Um, you know, as usual, love love having a chat with you, and I'm sure our listeners have got uh, tons of value. Um, and even uh, what I'll do is some of those um, uh, thought leaders that John mentioned, mm-hmm. um, and the book, and, and other things that he referenced, I'll pop in the show notes um, and the contact details to get in touch with Five by Five. So thanks again, mate. Appreciate you. Love time. it, Benny. Keep keep spreading the good word out there, mate. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Flying the flag. Uh, yeah, awesome to see all you're doing, mate. You are you are prolific, and uh, you are well and truly. We say eating eating the dog food, bit of a crude term, but <laughs> you're uh, you, you're you're out there implementing, getting it done, learning along the way, and uh, doing awesome stuff in your industry, buddy. So kudos to you. Thank you. I appreciate that, mate. And I'll chat soon. Okay. Thanks, Ben.